You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, you can subscribe directly from our website uh, to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that's compatible with a variety of different platforms, both desktop and mobile. Uh, you can also find us online at YouTube, uh, Blip.tv, Daily Motion, Stitcher, and uh, TuneIn.com. So definitely uh, check those out as well. If you use uh, those or prefer those methods, then you can uh, find us over there as well. Let's go ahead and get into the stories uh, for this episode, starting off over at Ars Technica, exploring Ubuntu Touch, the other Linux OS for your phone. The chances are good that if you're buying a smartphone or tablet in 2013, you're buying something with iOS or Android on it. The two operating systems loom so large over their competitors that even the entrenched, deep-pocketed Microsoft has had trouble making headway into this market with its Windows Phone, Windows 8, and Windows RT systems. Boy, isn't that the truth. Google and Apple's combined dominance hasn't stopped others from trying, though. New mobile operating systems been springing up like weeds we've got blackberry 10 and z10 it's an attempt to overhaul blackberry's image mozilla is making the firefox os and um canonical wants to make ubuntu, take ubuntu beyond the desktop with ubuntu touch so pretty interesting this uh talks about ubuntu touch they the uh, author here andrew cunningham got a not quite hands-on test drive of the 12.10 based version of Ubuntu's mobile operating system back at CES. And those images were updated to Ubuntu 13.04. So Ubuntu Touch won't be available at retail before the end of this year at the earliest, but right now might be an opportune time to check in to see how things are going. So definitely uh, check this out. Pretty interesting. Check it out. From TechRadar.com, Steam on Linux, everything you need to know if you are a gamer. The lack of quality mass appeal games on Linux is the critics' favorite excuse for dismissing Linux as a serious desktop operating system. Uh, okay. Maybe. We are glad to report that developments in the last few months will rob the peanut gallery of this reason for looking past Linux. So, sure thing, Uh, this is a nice little rundown of Valve, Steam, everything you need to know to get it working on Linux, and uh, some of the cool stuff uh, that uh, you can expect to see. I thought it was pretty cool. You know, definitely check it out, especially if you're a gamer and you want to use Linux. From Red Orbit, your universe online over at redorbit.com, Linux is to become the exclusive OS of the International Space Station, or so Red Orbit is saying. Laptop computers essential to the day-to-day operations of the International Space Station crew will be switching operating systems from Windows XP, yikes, Windows XP, yikes, uh, to Linux, according to published reports. The laptops, which are on the space station's OpsLAN network, are used by astronauts to interface with onboard cameras and complete several other routine tasks. While Linux has already been used to run several systems on board the ISS, this means it will now be the exclusive OS used on board the orbiting laboratory. So pretty cool. Definitely check this story out. I think it's neat that they're using Linux at all. You know, it could be some custom homegrown operating system that NASA has that they use in-house. Pretty neat that it's Linux. From thevarguy.com, the history of Linux. Time for an open source documentary. Hmm, interesting. How did Linux originate? Where is it presently and which directions is it headed for the future? These are the big questions that a longtime Linux user and developer named Brian Thomason seeks to answer in a documentary film. If, and this is a big if, 
if he can secure enough funding through a crowdsourcing campaign on Kickstarter. Here's hoping he succeeds. I hope so too. Um, you know, I think that would be a great, great documentary. Not enough people know the history of Linux. I mean, I've been covering Linux now since late 2004, just about weekly. It's been a little on and off here and there, but, you know, regularly uh, following Linux since late 2004, actually earlier than that. And, um, I, you know, it. I think that, you know, a nice documentary would be, especially one that you know, like gets to the meat and potatoes of it all, you know, that would be really informative to say the least. From iprogrammerint.info, uh, there's a book, Raspberry Pi in Easy Steps, for if you're looking to get started with Raspberry Pi, this is a great place to start. The author is Mike McGrath. The publisher is in Easy Steps. It's 192 pages. The audience is complete beginners. So, you know, uh, you may, if you're not a complete beginner, then, you know, uh, you may not want to, but if you're totally new to Raspberry Pi, this very well could be a great place to start. So definitely check this out, especially if you're looking at getting into Raspberry Pi. Uh, from Information Week, Google's cloud drops a custom Linux for Debian. That's right. Google has been using its own custom version of Linux, Google Compute Engine Linux, as it loads its customers' applications on into its infrastructure as a service. It announced Thursday that it's dropping that approach in favor of using the Debian Linux distribution. Debian Linux is the output of the Debian open source code project. All Linuxes use a kernel produced by the Linux kernel development process led by Linus Torvalds. We all know this, but Linux distributors surround the kernel with features that may match other Linux distributions or may differentiate that particular distribution. For example, Ubuntu was an early cloud supporter when it included eucalyptus modules. Then it switched to OpenStack as its primary cloud offering. So pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not surprised at all. Google probably did this simply because it makes it easier for them to support. Um, and if there's a known standard that, you know, developers can write their code to and they know it will run on Debian, they can get it into Google's compute engine a lot easier. So, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a good move, definitely. From the H Open, Gabe Newell and Eben Upton to Keynote Linux Con. That's right, Valve Software boss Gabe Newell and Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, founder Eben Up Upton have been announced as keynote speakers for the Linux Foundation's Linux Con and Cloud Open North America conferences. The two events will take place in New Orleans, Louisiana from the 16th to the 18th of September. Newell and Upton will be joining Jonathan Bryce of the OpenStack Foundation, HP Labs Director Martin Fink, and representatives from Intel and Wired Magazine on stage as keynote speakers. The popular Linux kernel panel, which features leading kernel developers and maintainers discussing the future of the open source operating system, will also be back. So pretty cool. Um, I really wish I could make this, but uh, I have a major life event happening here in the next month or so. So I will, it'll be exceedingly unlikely that I will make that. If anybody makes it and wants to record it for me so that I can listen in or, you know, maybe provide uh, little segments that we can include here on the show, that would be pretty awesome. Definitely shoot me an email, linux at quickthrift.com. And with that, that's the end of the show. I will see all of you on the next episode. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. And I will see all of you on the next episode. Let's see you then. Bye.